Welcome to the Yocto Project Application Development Toolkit plugin video for the 1.1 release. This video overviews and demonstrates powerful new plugin features. For a video of the previous 1.0 plugin, see the link on the documentation page of the Yocto Project website at www.yoctoproject.org. With this release, both the embedded application developer and the system developer can use the Yocto Eclipse plugin. The video covers application developer features first and then concludes with new features for the system developer. To begin the demonstration, we need to have the Eclipse IDE running and the Yocto Eclipse plugin installed. With the IDE running and the plugin installed, we can configure the Yocto ADT plugin. Select the Yocto ADT menu item in the Windows Preferences menu to display the Preferences dialog. You'll use this dialog to configure the Yocto ADT plugin for the IDE. You can configure the plugin to use either a standalone toolchain or a system derived toolchain. Selecting the standalone toolchain references the toolchain that was installed earlier in the opt pocky directory by either downloading the toolchain tarball and extracting it there or by running the ADT installer. Selecting the system derived toolchain references a toolchain that has already been populated into the Yocto project build tree by running the command bitbake meta-id-support. For this video we will select the standalone toolchain. An important feature when cross-developing using the Yocto project is the use of sysroot. Being able to point to different sysroots gives you the flexibility to use different target build profiles. For the Yocto Eclipse plugin in this video, we will use the sysroot that was extracted from the root file system built using the Yocto project. This rootfs is shared for booting up QEMU in UNFS. The last cross compiler option you need to configure is the target architecture. For the video we will use an x86 based 32-bit architecture i586 Pocky Linux. The Yocto project continues to support ARM, PowerPC, MIPS and x86 32 and 64-bit architectures. We need to configure the target options next. Here is where we choose to run the image on actual hardware or using the QEMU emulator. If we choose QEMU, we need to specify the location of the kernel. The custom option field is for advanced users to further specify QEMU options. After configuring the plugin for the IDE, we're all set to do development work. We select File New C Project to create a project. From the template selections, we make sure to choose one of the Yocto ADT projects so we take full advantage of the Yocto Eclipse ADT plugin features. For this video, a project using the Hello World ANSI C Auto Tools template has been created in advance. If we take a look at the project's settings by selecting Project Change Yocto Project Settings, we'll see that they are inherited from the Yocto ADT plugin settings we set up earlier for the IDE. If you want, you can override these settings for the project here. For the video, we'll be using the default settings. Since the project is auto tool based, we need to run autogen to trigger autoconf and other auto tools. To do this, we'll reconfigure the project. Examining the console output shows how the correct cross tools from the setup were picked up. Notice the cross compiler and the cross linker here. Finally, we compile the project by selecting Project Build Project. Once the project is built, we can remotely deploy and debug the application. 
First, we'll bring up the QEMU emulator with the Run External Tools menu selection. Notice the target architecture specific QEMU launcher is created for us by the ADT plugin. We just need to select it to launch QEMU. Okay, QEMU is now up. Let's note down its IP address for later use by bringing up a terminal and putting in the ifconfig command. Next we'll run the debug configuration. In the navigation pane to the left, we see that under the C++ remote applications, a project for remote debug configuration is already created by the Octo ADT. We'll just click it to bring up the debug configuration screen for the project. In this auto-generated debug configuration, we need to make sure the connection is correct for the desired target. We can see that the IP address we noted earlier when QEMU came up is in place and is correct. If the connection was incorrect, we could just click on New to create the right connection. Make sure the connection used is TCF which stands for Target Configuration Framework. For everything else, we just follow the wizard. For this video, we already have the connection created, so we can just cancel out here. The other thing to specify here is the remote path for the application. This path points to where the program is deployed on the remote target, or to where the application can be found on the remote target. By default, the program is deployed to the remote location, unless we select Skip Download to Target Path. We can now click on Debug. We'll be prompted to log into the remote target if necessary. Next, we'll be asked to switch to the debug perspective. We can answer yes to that. Once in the debug perspective, we can use standard CDT debug features like stepping into and over the program. For this video, we'll just end the debug session here. In QEMU, we can see that the program is also deployed into the desired QEMU target location. Running it from the terminal demonstrates this. Now, let's switch back to the C++ perspective. For the Yocto Project 1.1 release, the Yocto Tools menu is now in the main menu bar to make it more visible. With this 1.1 release, the TCF agent is still used to facilitate remote tools interaction. Also for this release, System Tap support has been added to the tool suite. All other tool usage has not changed since the Yocto Project 1.0 release. For this video, we'll only demonstrate the system tap usage. The connection field shows the remote target. The kernel module field is for the kernel module that will be transferred and run on the remote target that contains the desired probe. For details on system tap and how to generate the probe kernel module, just access the Yocto project wiki by using the projects tracing and profiling menu selection. For the video, we're using traceopen.ko as the kernel module. Once we have selected that module and clicked OK, we can look at the remote terminal console to see the module transferred over and the probe started.
Overall, for the application developer, the Octo Eclipse ADT plugin for the 1.1 release follows the same look and feel. The workflow in the 1.1 release is also the same as it was in the 1.0 release, so developers should have no problems if they are already familiar with that flow. Let's take a look at the help about information now. We can see that the plugin has been upgraded to the latest Eclipse Indigo release. Also, the Octo Project Application Development Toolkit manual has been updated to reflect Indigo. The manual contains detailed steps showing how to configure the Indigo Eclipse to support the Octo Eclipse plugin. That pretty much covers features for the application developer. Now let's talk about some new features for the system developer. These features let system developers that use the Yocto project customize their build through metadata, all without leaving the Eclipse IDE. To demonstrate this feature, we use a new project template called Yocto Bitbait Commander. We can create a project based on this template by going to the Files New Project menu and picking a new Yocto project under the Yocto Bitbait Commander template. In the template, the project name field is the name of the top level directory for the Yocto project files. In other words, this is the directory name in which a Yocto project release tarball has been expanded, or the top level directory resulting from using git to clone the Yocto project repositories. This directory structure contains the Yocto project metadata. The project location field is the parent directory of the project name. If you don't have a local Yocto project files directory, you can check the clone from Yocto git repository box. Checking this box lets git clone the latest master of the Yocto project Pocky repository into the directory provided in the project name field. For this video, we already have a local Yocto project file structure whose top level directory is named YBC, set up to use with the Yocto Bitbait Commander project. After the project is created, we can navigate through the meta directory of the Yocto project files and interact with files. If you select a recipe file, for example, you can see the keywords are highlighted in the editor. Here, we show the ACP ID recipe. If you have the eGit plugin installed in your IDE, you can use Git as the source control manager for your Yocto Bitbait Commander project. For this video, we don't have that plugin installed. After modifying the metadata, the system developer normally runs a Yocto build that uses Yocto Bitbait against the metadata. The developer can now do this using another new feature for the Yocto Project 1.1 release, an easy to use Yocto Bitbait user interface called HOB that helps the user to customize and run their build. In the video we launch HOB using the Project Launch HOB menu selection which is only available for Yocto Bitbait Commander projects. The Bitbait build directory is where we want the Yocto build output to go referred to as the Yocto project build directory. For this example we are using YBC underscore build. Within the Yocto Eclipse plugin you cannot create the Yocto project build directory under the Yocto project directory. You need to create the build directory outside of your Yocto project files directory. Once we specify the build directory, HOB launches. The HOB, combined with the Yocto Bitbait Commander projects, allows the system developer to modify the metadata and configure the Yocto project build through Yocto Bitbait to achieve customization for their embedded target. To learn about HOB, you should view the training video on the documentation page of the Yocto project website at www.yoctoproject.org. That covers it for the new features for both the application and system developer. To summarize, the 1.1 release Yocto Eclipse plugin features allow both the application and system developer to use the Eclipse IDE 
to develop, debug, and build images for their targeted devices. Thanks for taking the time to view this training video on the Yocto Project Eclipse Plugin 1.1 release. We hope that you found it helpful. For more information on the Yocto Project, visit the website at www.yoctoproject.org.